Today we're going to explore functions in a little bit greater detail, learning how to make new functions from old functions, or how to apply transformations to functions to get them to look like different things. So we're going to discuss four basic ways of doing that today in this first lecture. So we'll discuss um, horizontal, or vertical stretches and compressions, and then also horizontal vertical translations. So first, let me just draw a few pictures about, uh, you know, so you understand what these terms mean, and then we'll get into some of the uh, symbology. So first of all, Suppose I have a function that looks like this. Okay, so that's y is equal to f of x, and there's x. Um, now suppose I take, suppose the new function looks like that. So all of the y values are pressed against the x-axis, so it's squished. Um, this is called a vertical compression. Now the opposite, well there's two, I guess two opposites, but on the other side, if you start with a function like this and then pull it away from the x-axis and get a new function that looks like that, that's a vertical stretch. So that's what vertical compression and stretches. So literally the compression, you're taking the outputs and just squeezing them down towards the x-axis. And then for the stretch, you're taking the graph and pulling it away from the x-axis. So that's what a compression is and a stretch. And the horizontal compression and stretches are exactly uh, analogous. I had this one. Okay, so now let's look next at just to see what the horizontal versions look like. So let's say we have, let's do a different looking function. A function that looks like that. So there's the x axis and there's y is equal to f of x. So a horizontal stretch, we're literally taking these guys and stretching them out like this. So I'll draw it on the other side. So maybe it will look something like that. So I'm taking the graph and I'm stretching it away from the y-axis. That's called a horizontal stretch. And then the reverse of that is a horizontal compression. So when I'm squeezing the graph back in, that's a horizontal compression. So I'm not going to draw the horizontal compression because it's just exactly the opposite. Okay. Um, okay, what about horizontal and vertical translations? Okay, we'll start with red. So let's say I have a graph like this. Now, if I take that graph, I'll use green, and I it's exactly the same, so that's supposed to be a copy, it's just like I copy and paste it, but everything is slides over to the right. I guess that one corresponds here. And so, so everything is just picked up and then moved over to the right and set back down. So basically like you drag and drop on your computer. You pick this guy up, move it to the right, only to the right, drop it down. And that is called a horizontal translation. And this is, of course, to the right. And you can also do a horizontal translation to the left. You just pick up your graph, move it to the left, put it down. Then similarly, let's say I start with a graph like that. 
and then I end up with a graph like this, I just moved everything directly up like that. So that's a vertical translation. And then, so this is horizontal and vertical stretches, compressions, and translations. And there are also, there are two other things, horizontal and vertical reflections. So let's look at what reflections look like. So if I have x, y plane, so y is equal to f of x, and let me make it something like this. So there's the graph. So a horizontal reflection is going to look like that. So this is a horizontal reflection. So I literally just mirror image the graph about the y-axis. Now on the other hand, if the new graph looks like this, that's a vertical reflection. Right? So the, uh, the graph, the picture of the graph, is just reflected about the x-axis this time. So vertical reflection, horizontal reflection. So that's what reflections look like. Okay, so how do we represent these sorts of changes or transformations mathematically in terms of our functional notation? So if f of x is the original function, um, and I'm going to use g of x for the new function. A couple of different cases, maybe I'll add a little subscript here. So first of all, let's say different cases, let's say g1 of x is equal to f of a times x. g2 of x is equal to a times f of x. g3 of x is equal to f of x plus a. g4 of x is equal to f of x plus a. Two more. g5 of x is equal to f of minus x, and then g6 of x is equal to negative f of x. So this is the arsenal of changes that we'll consider. And what we actually saw in those examples where we talked about vertical stretch, vertical compression, vertical reflection, and horizontal versions of all of those, uh, mathematically is just represented in all these weird looking kind of um, modifications of the original f of x. So let's go through one at a time and take a look at these. Okay, so first of all, let's look at g1 of x is equal to f of a times x. And we'll assume to start off, we'll do two cases, a greater than 1 You'll see y in a moment. And then a greater than 0 and less than 1. So either a is greater than 1 or a is between 0 and 1. OK, so this, something is changing on the inside, inside of the parentheses. We have f of a times x. So let's just think about what that might mean. So let's just draw a generic curve, and then we can change it if we need to. So f of a times x. So let's think about this. Let's do an example. Let's say a is equal to 2. right? So then g1 of x would equal f of 2x. OK, well, let's compute g1 of 3. Well, g1 of 3 would equal f of 2 times 3, which is f of 6. So g1 of 3 so g1 of 3 right here is going to equal f 
of 6. Now f of 6 has this y value right here. So g1, so g of 3, I'll dispense from referring to the subscript since it's, we'll just consider these one at a time. g of 3, 1, 2, 3, has that y value. So this y value moves that way. Let's look at something else. Let's look at g of 2. g of 2 is equal to f of 2 times 2, or f of 4. Well, f of 4 is right here. And that's the height for f of 4. And that's where we are at with g of 2. So g of x looks like that, whereas the original f of x was like this blue one. So basically what this is, is it's a compression by a factor of 2. So, and this was a greater than 1. So if we say g of x is equal to f of a times x, it's a horizontal um, compression. if a is greater than 1, and it's a horizontal, and to assume it's a horizontal stretch if a is less than 1 but greater than 0. So let's, you know, think a moment about the case where a is something less than 1. And notice that what I'm doing to get a feel for these is just constructing a simple example that I can visualize and you know play with. So let's think about g of x is equal to f of 0 0.5 times x. So that one was a compression, so maybe this one will be a stretch. So let's do something like that. So this would be do it like that. Two. Okay, so let's look at g of 4. Well, g of 4 will equal f of 0 0.5 times 4, which is equal to f of 2. Well, let's look to see what f of 2 is. f of 2, so here's 2, x is equal to 2. So f of 2 is this height right here. So that's the height that the function g will be at x is equal to 4. So this point gets stretched out to here. And so basically what you're going to end up with is something like that. So this is the g of x. And then the blue was the f of x. We can try it for another point. g of 2. g of 2 is just f of 0 0.5 times 2, which is f of 1. So for x is equal to 1, f of 1 is here. And then this height, you see that that height is g at 2. So f of 1 is equal to g of 2. So when a is less than 1, we indeed get a horizontal stretch. So let's next look at our next example. So that previous one was g1 of x was f of a times x. And we got horizontal stretch compressions. So next, let's examine g2 of x is equal to a times f of x. So instead of having a on the inside of the function, a is on the outside of the function. And let's see, and up here, let's do a little annotation. Uh, which one was a greater than 1? Well, a greater than 1 was the first one we did, and it was the compression. So this was a greater than 1, and the stretch was a less than 1 for g1. So now it might not necessarily be the same case with g2, but let's find out. So g2, a is on the outside of f of x. So if I have f of x like this, and we say g2 of x is equal to 2 times f of x, what this actually means is take the output, so f of x is the output, and multiply the output by 2. right? So we take the output, maybe the output's 1 here, we multiply that by 2 and we get this one. 
So whatever the output is, we're always taking this y value at the given x and then just multiplying it up by 2 to get the y value. So for example, say this is 5. g of 5 is just equal to 2 times f of 5. Right? So we just take the f of 5 and we double it and it goes up there. So for a greater than 0, we get a stretch for a greater than 1. And then for a less than 1, we get a compression. Because if a is less than 1, we're multiplying the output by a number less than 1, like say 1 half, and it's being compressed down. So depending on whether or not um, this a multiple is inside, acting on x directly, or as we saw in the first case, or outside, acting on the output, depends on whether or not it's a horizontal or a vertical stretch slash compression. If it's inside, it's going to be a horizontal stretch or compression because A is literally modifying the X variable. So it's changing the X variable and either stretching it out or compressing it in. If it's outside, A is modifying the Y variable because F of X is the output and we're multiplying the output by A, not the input by A. So it's actually going to affect the output height, either stretching or compressing it appropriately. Now let's go to translations. So we have f of x plus a. So this was g3 of x. OK, so this is another. And you might suspect, if you're thinking ahead, that this is a horizontal translation. And you would be right, horizontal translation. Right. So it's horizontal because the a is modifying the inside variable, so it's modifying the x. It's x plus a, so we're evaluating x at a different place. Just like in the, with the function g1, we had a times x. We were evaluating the input of the domain in a different place. So let's say we have just something like that. Okay, so to get an idea... Let's say this is 1, 2, I guess 3. Why not? 1, 2, 3. Just like that. Okay, so to get an idea of this, let's think g3 of 4. Now let's say 0. So g3 of 0 is going to equal f of 0 plus... Okay, let's do g3 of x is equal to f of x plus 2. We'll stick with 2. So we'll use an example, a is equal to 2. So g3 of 0 is f of 0 plus 2, which is just f of 2. So f of 2 is this height right here. So that is going to be g of 0. So it takes that one and moves it, translates it to the left by 2 units. g3 of negative 1 is going to be f of negative 1 plus 2, which is equal to f of 1. So at minus 1, we get it's the same as f of 1. So f of 1 will be g of minus 1. So this point goes here, this point goes here, this point moves here, and then we get, I guess, like that this is compressed. So the whole thing is just translated two units to the left. So we see that when we do g of x is equal to f of x plus a, this is a horizontal translation. And then if a is greater than 0, it's to the left. And if a is less than 0, it's to the right. And then next, we have um, f of x, so this is g4 of x, is equal to f of x plus a. So this is pretty basic as well. If a is greater than 0, it's up. a less than 0, it's down. And these are vertical translations. Okay, so let's give you an example. 
example, here's f of x. So if we do f of x plus 2, so g of x is equal to f of x plus 2, we just take these outputs and we add 2 to them. And we get the g of x. Now this looks a little bit like the vertical stretch, but it's different because instead of taking the outputs and multiplying by them by the same factor, so you might have something, you know, so if you have something like this, the new one, which I'll do in green, is a multiplication, right, like that. Whereas if it's a stretch, flat, or if it's the translation, the whole thing is translated up. So the stretch is in green, and we're literally we're just multiplying the outputs by two in that case. Whereas the translation, everything is just picked up and slid. So this is the translation case where you're picking up and sliding. And to read this, say it's just the output, and we're adding a constant to all of the outputs. So we're moving it up. If a is negative, we're subtracting a constant from the output, so we're just sliding it down. And then finally, um, reflections. So if we say g5 of x is equal to f of minus x, again, since the negative is acting on the inside, that's going to be a horizontal uh, reflection. So there's f and there's g. And then g6 of x is negative f of x. Since the negative is on the outside, it's a vertical reflection. So that's, those are six basic ways in which you can create a new function from an old function.